Tonight, I wanna to talk to you about damper rods, what they do in your forks, what you should look for if you're going to change them. Damper rod looks like this. Where does it go? It goes inside your fork tube, it goes in before the spring, and when it comes out through the bottom, it looks like this, okay? Two things to keep in mind, or one thing really. Sometimes damper rods are held in by a circlip, which is in the bottom of the fork like this. If you have the fork tubes in your triple clamps, you can sometimes get that damper out by just snapping out that ring and removing the dampers. Other times, forks will, made, will be made differently, like this Honda fork right here. It's been machined to where the damper rod can only go down and it can only be taken out through the top. So that's something to look for next time you're going to do something with damper rods or you're changing your suspension. Let's get a closer look now with the camera and I'll talk to you a little bit about how the damper rod works and what you can look for next time you go to change them or you're looking to experiment with some things on your suspension. Let's talk first about some of the holes that are in these damper rods. You can see here where there's one, it goes right through to the other side, and there's another one that's a little bit lower, and it also goes through the other side. The bigger holes on the uh, damper rod, the larger ones will help the fork oil move more freely with less of a harsh feeling. Now, on top, you have some smaller holes. You can see them here and here, and they also don't go through the other side. The smaller holes are for the oil to return, and that is for your rebound. Many times what people have done over the years is they've actually welded in these holes, and you may see this on your fork. You're wondering why there may be some brass or braze there. They fill them in, and then they drill new holes. They drill them a little higher, they drill them a little smaller, and that changes how the action of the fork will work. Something else you want to look for, too, is sometimes there's a cup like this, and what they sold back then were fork kits. A little cup went over this. It actually extended the tube, or the lower fork leg, to go down a little bit. It would give another half inch, maybe an inch of travel on an old set of forks. It came with a longer bolt like this. You'd bolt the whole thing together. You might want to look for that on some of your old bikes as well. Now, this spring right here, this is called a top out spring. When this fork is riding in your bike, when you are say taking off of a jump or you're doing, going through some stutter bumps or over some whoops, this will Stop that fork from bottoming out. These do come in different lengths. If you see them longer at times, they may have been on a bike that had some type of air fork involved or some type of caps that, uh, that used air in that fork. But for the most part, they're about that size. Something else I want to talk about with you is what happens after you put the fork spring in the bike. Preload is what it's called. What is preload? There is sometimes on top of your fork a little cap like this that goes on top of the spring. It prevents the preload from going down over the spring. Sometimes guys will replace a piece of steel like this with some shorter pieces of PVC. It's not uncommon, it's not unusual, and yes, you can still do it. What will the preload do? Well, when you put that piece on there and it preloads that fork, it's going to make it feel a little bit stiffer when you're going over some of your smaller bumps and maybe whoops. You're going to think it's the greatest thing ever when you hit those little whoops and all of a sudden it feels a whole lot better because the spring has been compressed a little bit. Now, where's the downside to that? With that fork compressed, when you go to hit your bigger jumps or on landings, you're going to have some coil bind on that spring and you're going to lose a little bit there. The best thing you could do, really, is to play around more with the springs and the spring rate that you can buy, or make sure you go back to a, a stock damper rod like this. Yes, you can start welding these things in and drilling them and experimenting that way, but with so many different viscosities of oil today, you can really fine tune a fork much better, especially an older set of forks, by playing more and experimenting more with the spring and with the viscosity of the oil. And yes, of course, the preload too is something that you can also experiment with to get the ride you're looking for. Something else we can talk about here is, and here's another damper rod. This one happens to be a Yamaha. The other one is a Honda. This one happens to have two holes that are a little bit further apart than the one on the bottom uh, on, the, on the Honda rod. So you can take a look for those two and uh, look for fork kits. You, your bike might have a fork kit on it. Be aware of that before you change anything. 
Keep in mind the viscosity of the oil, the spring, and how it's wound, what it's good for as far as your weight, and of course, the oil as well.